Hello, hi, and welcome to another in the 10-Minute Tips series. This program is titled 50 Ways to Accelerate Debt Collection Starting Today. This is part of an on-demand series. If you're interested in hearing the entire presentation, please contact the sponsoring association or organization. Let's begin with an introduction. Did you know that approximately 80% of people that are working as business-to-business -business debt collectors learn the job on the job? which means they learn by trial and error. And I think we would all acknowledge that the problem with learning by trial and error are the errors. Errors made along the way are expensive, are time-consuming, and they are embarrassing to you, to your company, and potentially to your salesperson, and of course problematic to your customers. The goal today is to shorten the learning curve for business-to-business -business debt collectors. Still another goal is to provide tools that you can use beginning immediately to start collecting debts more quickly and to provide ideas that will make attendees more comfortable as well as more capable as it relates to collecting past due invoices. The program today presents ideas and tools and techniques that you can implement immediately and since I'm emphasizing this, I would encourage you to seriously consider doing exactly that. If you hear something that strikes a chord that you would want to try, that you think is appropriate, please consider implementing the idea immediately, and here's why. What we know from historical experience with these programs is ideas that don't get implemented promptly, don't get tried promptly, don't ever get implemented. And that's very unfortunate, but it's also true. Debt collection tips. Please recognize that every one of us needs to find or strike the right balance between the quantity of calls that we make and the quality of calls that we make. More specifically, let's just illustrate with an example. Let's assume your goal is to make 50 outbound collection calls every day. Okay. If that is true, then the problem is you're going to have to sacrifice quality for quantity. When you're on the phone trying to make 50 calls a day, you're going to have short discussions with customers. You might even take their first offer because you need to get off the phone. You need to get on to the next call. And that is potentially problematic. What you need to do is strike the right balance between quantity and quality. Because by quality, what I mean is you need to interact with your customers. You need to have a dialogue. You have to negotiate sometimes for a better payment commitment than their first offer or worst offer. Don't use form letters. Instead, personalize any form of written correspondence. For example, I've seen uh, form letters that say attention accounts payable or attention accounts payable manager or attention accounting department. That's just wrong. At the absolute minimum, we need to identify the person by name, attention Jane Smith, accounts payable manager, as opposed to attention accounts payable. We're trying to increase the likelihood, the possibility that our correspondence is going to be opened and dealt with. And if all we do, if we make it simplistic enough that we're sending things to the attention of a department instead of a person, we're reducing the chances that the letter will ever be opened and read and understood and acted upon. When you generate invoices, make sure that your invoices clearly state the due date as well as the discount due date if that's applicable, if in fact you offer an early payment cash discount. And since we're talking about invoices, please make sure that your company is invoicing customers promptly, by which I mean you should be invoicing within 24 hours of the shipment date or, uh, of, your, of your products. Why? Because you don't want to give customers an additional excuse for delaying payment. And one additional excuse is your invoices are always late. Uh, so that backlog is problematic for you. So make sure that, that that thing called invoicing happens, even though your department doesn't necessarily get involved in that process. Uh, because you're ultimately responsible for collecting those invoices, you have a vested interest in making sure that your company is invoicing promptly. Be sure that your invoices, your company's invoice, lists the remittance address correctly. Ideally, you're using a bank lockbox system and your uh, invoice clearly states, please remit payment, Mr. Customer, to uh, this bank at that address uh, for, with, with that particular reference number so that those payments are recorded promptly by your bank lockbox. 
Make sure that your company does not process customer purchase orders with incorrect pricing or incorrect payment terms. As a consultant, what I see very often is that companies are great as it relates to incorrect pricing. The PO comes in, they look, they check the pricing. If the pricing's right, that may be the only thing that the order entry team checks before they prepare the order for shipment. I would argue that incorrect payment terms are just as valid a reason to reject a customer PO as an incorrect price. Because the reason we reject incorrect pricing is we know it's going to create a problem with payment. Well, incorrect payment terms we know are going to create a problem with payment. So from my perspective, it's a simple fix. Don't accept or process purchase orders from customers that list an incorrect payment term. For example, if your payment term is net 30 and the PO says net 60, it should be rejected. And I know that's controversial because people don't want to delay shipments, but it's funny, it's, it's ironic perhaps, that they would clearly, at least most companies, would clearly reject a PO with incorrect pricing. So it's sort of a double standard. And I'm, I'm not sure why, and I don't think if you asked someone in, in the position that makes that decision, why would you reject a PO with the wrong price and not reject a PO with the wrong payment terms? I don't think they could give you a solid, valid, sound, logical answer. Make certain that your credit application document and your invoices list your payment terms and that they match because guess what? I've seen that too. I've seen the, the credit application say net 30 and the invoices say next, net 60 and the question is, well, which one is it? And the answer is we need to be consistent. We need at least to get this right internally uh, before we can ever make an expectation that the customer pay us based on the correct terms, whichever terms are correct. Consider please eliminating grace periods in their entirety before calling delinquent customers. In other words, if you have a process in place that says we don't call customers until they're at least X days past due, let's just say 10 days past due, please recognize that there is no benefit to the creditor company of allowing that 10-day grace period. So consider eliminating it. Instead, perhaps the strategy would be call delinquent customers as soon as possible. Call sooner rather than later. In other words, recognize that every customer is eligible for a phone call the day that they become past due. Business to business uh, collection tips continue. Remember, the more flexibility that you demonstrate, the, the greater the potential for abuse by your customers. And by the way, this is especially important with new customers because newly formed, newly established customers, I should say, companies that you've just opened on open account terms, are very curious about your company's sensitivity to delays in payment. They may, in fact, be testing you to see just how sensitive you are, at what point you will call, and how assertive you will be in that discussion with that new customer about their past balance. Call don't write. Call delinquent customers. If you if you do both, that's fine. You can do both, but they, one does not preclude you doing doing the other. And if you only have the opportunity to do one, call them. Call, discuss, negotiate, have a have a dialogue, have a discussion. Because we recognize that written correspondence is one-way communication. And the problem with one-way communication is we don't know how the customer is going to react, respond to an email, Dunning Lotus, Dunning Lotus a friendly reminder, uh, a month-end statement. But you know, on a call, in a dialogue, we get immediate feedback from the customer about payment. Use your account's receivable aging report because the longer an account is passed through, the harder it is to collect. In other words, you need to focus some degree of time, and energy, and attention on the smaller, older past due balances. I, I think we all acknowledge that we're going to address and try to resolve promptly the larger past due balances, but we cannot afford to ignore the small ones and allow them to age out because the longer they're out there, the less likely we are to collect them, the more likely we are to have to write off the past due balance. Hold orders as leverage to force delinquent customers to pay the past due balance. That is a tool in the toolbox. It has to be in the toolbox because that is uh, very close to the ultimate form of leverage that we have, is to hold orders pending. So it needs to be there. We, we take that out of the toolbox occasionally, um, and we try to use it as a last resort. But we, the credit department, need the ability to hold orders. Consider all involving your salespeople in collections to bring additional uh, pressure to bear. 
bring additional attention to the problem that the account is past due. Now I'm not saying send your salesperson in to talk to the AP manager. I'm suggesting that your salesperson knows somebody who's not the AP manager, namely the buyer, and perhaps the second front could be the salesperson talking to the buyer, you're talking to the accounting department, and between the two of you and the two of them, the past due invoice gets paid sooner rather than later. Recognize that grace periods are unnecessary. You don't need a grace period before charging back an unearned cash discount. You don't need a grace period before, before calling a delinquent customer. Please get comfortable with the idea of negotiating. We all have to negotiate with customers. It, the alternative is simply you're, you're a note taker. That's all you do. You say, hi, when's payment scheduled? And they tell you whatever they're going to tell you. And you write it down and say, thank you. That's not the job. I wish it were. It was, boy, that would make my life easier because what could be easier than writing down whatever the customer says? But we have to negotiate in order to convince our customers to pay us sooner rather than later. Business business debt collection tips continued. Remember to charge back unearned cash discount in order to discourage customers from continuing to abuse your discount terms. Remember to document your customers' payment commitments. Ideally, send them an email at the end of every discussion to confirm what they just told you about payment. This is controversial, but I'll say it anyway. Consider calling customers about large dollar invoices before the due date to discuss payment status. Always ask your customer for and always expect to receive immediate payment in full of the entire past due balance. Do confirm, do in fact confirm each and every commitment for payment that you have in writing. And by writing, I do mean an email. I'm not suggesting that you, you know, use snail mail, but instead that you develop a script. And my script goes something like this. Uh, dear Amy, thank you for your time in our recent conversation. To confirm our discussion, you indicated payment would be issued for $25,000 on Friday. Uh, thank you for your time, best regards, etc. That's it. It's that simple. But then if there, there's no controversy and doing that added step, making that confirmation a priority, means that it is far less likely that Amy is going to forget uh, to pay you on Friday. Very important, prioritize outbound collection calls in descending dollar value. In other words, call the largest pass to balance first, the second largest pass to balance second, etc. That's the priority that we need to apply, all things being equal, to every day's collection efforts. Measure your collection performance because things that don't get measured don't get done. And establish collection related targets and goals uh, for your subordinate collectors. So this is the end of the 10-minute tips presentation on business-to-business -business debt collection. Thank you for your time today. I hope you found this program to be useful and interesting. If you would be interested in hearing the entire presentation, please contact the sponsoring association or organization for more information about this and other on-demand programs. Have a great day.